Hello and welcome to our Career Coaching Corner. This is a new virtual collaboration between Oakland University's Office of Alumni Engagement and Career Services. I'm your host, Erin Sidorovich, Director of the Alumni Engagement Department. I'm up here in the corner. Uh, but joining me today are two of my favorite alumni. I want to introduce Kelly Dorner, Class of 1996, and Matt Karanja, Class of 1997. So thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about some tips that may help you navigate this uh, current job market. So to start off, I'm going to have Kelly and Matt introduce themselves and talk about their areas of expertise. So Kelly, why don't you start? Sure thing. Thanks, Erin. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Dorner, and I am Director of Internal Operations for Career Services here at Oakland University. Um, I've been in my role at Oakland for just about five years, and prior to that, I was in the recruiting world for a number of years, as well as in training and development for a staffing company. So really sort of grew up in the world of recruiting and the people business, which really primed me well for my career here at Career Services at Oakland University, where I get the opportunity to not only talk with employers about industry needs and expectations, but also work with our Oakland University students and alumni to offer coaching on resumes and interviews and those types of things. And I'm excited to have the chance to be with you today and offer any tips and support that I can provide on phone interviews and video interviews. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Thanks, Kelly. Hey, Matt, tell us about yourself. Aaron, thank you very much for allowing us to participate in this. It is a great honor to help out the students and alums at Oakland University. Uh, my background, I graduated from OU in 1997 with a degree in communications. Um, I'm heavily involved on campus, uh, part of the Alumni Association. I'm a board of directors on the Alumni Association. I'm also heavily involved in the School of Business and the Achieve program. I go back to the career services often and work with the career counselors um, and coaches over there. But most importantly, um, my role has been the last 24 years has been in recruiting and sales um, and staffing. Um, I'm the vice president of sales for a company called LHP Engineering Solutions. Uh, we are focused in the embedded software space, the Thomas vehicle. Uh, heavily involved in engineering, but I also do hire the support roles within the different organizations, such as finance, sales, um, HR. So a well-rounded background. Uh, I'm looking forward to helping out and giving some advice. Um, also, I am the executive director for a nonprofit called Career Ministries of Michigan which gives free support to the unemployed and underemployed in the state of Michigan. And we've been doing that for 20 years. So I'm very excited to be back and working with my partner in crime, Kelly, who I've known <laughs> for 25 years. And Kelly got me involved at Oakland University, so I owe everything to Kelly <laughs> for this. Nice. Well, so obviously some really great experience uh, between the two of you uh, to talk about today's topic, which is... Uh, phone and uh, video interviewing uh, tips and learning kind of specific skills uh, for those types of interview situations. So Kelly, let's start, um, you know, by having you kind of tell us why this topic is important. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Erin. So I think that as the world over the past several of years has shown its capabilities in the virtual space, the whole concept of phone and video interviews has been around, right? So I would say that it has not been an uncommon way to have a preliminary screen for a job, to have that first step in the process be a phone interview. And then I think, you know, over the past several years, industry has also realized that it's a quickly, it's a good way for them to sort of scale what they're doing and ease a process to offer candidates video interview opportunities as well. In this virtual world, we're just not in a space now where employers um, for years have really counted on that face-to-face -face interaction being the only way to get to know a potential candidate for an opening. Um, Enter this coronavirus pandemic and something that had been a growing trend 
sort of made a, a complete shift to being the only way of interviewing candidates for positions. So companies that maybe had dabbled in this space for a bit of a preliminary screen have been expected to make the shift to it being the only way that they would interview candidates. And, you know, I think that it wouldn't surprise me based on what's going on in industry if this trend sticks around for quite a while, right? Because even after we are at a place where employers are back on site, it could be that much longer before companies are really comfortable having candidates for positions interview on site, right? So at any rate, I think, Erin, the point of this is that it was a growing trend to begin with pre-corona. We've sort of been forced into this being the primary, right? And I think that it's a trend that will stick around for a long time to come afterward as companies try to adjust to what their new normal will be. Absolutely. Matt, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so we're seeing the same thing. So LHP, uh, one of the areas, we do national recruiting. We recruit out of California, Oregon, Cal uh, New York, Florida, Georgia, and also in the Midwest, heavily in Detroit. But for us, it is simpler and more cost efficient to do a phone screen or a video interview first to make sure that the candidate is a right fit. We're also saving the candidate times too, because after an hour, hour and a half long video conference, we can see if this person is going to be a fit for our organization, but they, more importantly, the candidate can see if they're a fit for our organization. So it's saving us on cost, it's saving us on timing, because we're trying to get a lot of people together in a conference room is difficult. So we've been doing this for the last couple of years. And as Kelly mentioned, now with uh, the COVID-19 virus, it's mandatory. It's the only way that we're able to do interviews now. Uh, we typically like to do WebEx, or Zoom inter interviews to start. Um, it's the easiest platforms for us. So with our company, we do use WebEx, uh, but it's a, other platforms are just as compatible or important. So it depends on the company that you are interviewing with, um, but this is gonna be the new norm. And that is the phrase that's going out now, but this is the new norm. A lot of companies are not going back to their physical location to at least the fall time. Um, and when they do come back, it's going to be a slow rollout. And they don't want to bring people on site to their campus or their facility. So by able to do this and do a, a video interview, a video conference interview, they can make their decision. They can offer the talent the job. And then if the candidate has to work remote, they can send them over the technology that's needed. So this is going to be the future, in my opinion. Well, so let's, uh, you know, let's talk about what is going to set our alums and our students up for, you know, the best interview, you know, the, um, to have the most success. What makes video and, and phone interviews um, unique and how do you show your best self, right, with, with that platform? Yeah, Erin, I'll start with that. I feel that what makes it unique is to some degree people generally, candidates generally don't know what to expect, right? So that adds a element of nervous energy that um, sort of compounds the typical nervous energy that someone might have even going into a face-to-face -face interview. So I think that that element of unknown, if it's a space that a candidate's not used to, is going to add some unique um, dynamics there. And I also think that some of it goes into a candidate wondering, you know, how should I prepare for such a thing? How much would I really be expected to know? If I were going on site, I would do a lot of research and I would, you know, make sure that I know all of these things about the opportunity and company. But especially in this COVID world that we're living in, everything has begun to feel very sort of casual and cavalier and sort of we're all just working through um, this environment in the moment, right? But I would say that for interviews, the most important piece that I can give is regardless of the platform, regardless if it's phone or video, the most important thing that you can do is all 
all of the research and preparation that you would typically do if you're if you would be face to face. And then there's also some unique dynamics that I think we'll get into as we discuss further, Erin, that should be considered about just being over the phone with the employer or being on video with an employer and some of the awkwardness that might present itself in that way and how to navigate those things. So yeah. Matt, what would you add to that? No, absolutely. The hardest part, especially if you have not done it yet, is understanding the technology and understanding that this is still a real interview. You have to prepare for it like it's a real interview, like you're going on a site to a tier one, a financial suit, wherever you're interviewing. This is the decision makers, and you have to put your bet best foot forward. And if you don't, if you don't do the research on the company, uh, I was just in an interview and our engineer asked, so what do you know about LHP? Tell us what you know. And they don't care about the stock or the financials. They want to know what you know about our technology and what we're working with. And if they don't come prepared, that person's already not going to be considered, unfortunately. Or what do you know about the opportunity? Did the recruiter tell you about the opportunity? Do you understand what the role is you're going to be in? No, I don't understand the role. Can you explain? Well, that's not the answer you want to give. You want to give the answer that you know of the role, but also say, well, this is what I know of the opportunity. Uh, but if you can get more insight or go in more detail, I would love to understand the day-to-day -day dynamics or what you're looking for in this role, how I can come and be a an asset for you and ask the questions you want to be engaged the worst thing you can do is have that person the manager or the interviewer ask all the questions you want it to be a conversation you want to have a dialogue and you want to feel comfortable and to be honest and this is a great form and i know OU is looking to do this is have more practice right or understand the technology if you have that you will be more successful so when we come to that idea of, of comfort, you know, and understanding the technology, I know I always wonder, do I need to look at my camera? Do I look at my screen? Um, you know, what do you say about even little things like that, Kelly? What are you, um, what are you uh, finding <laughs> is the best advice? I think that the best advice is to practice, 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 right? Um, if you have a video interview, do not let the first time that you're logging into Zoom, right, um, which is hard to picture in today's environment, right? Everyone's on Zoom for one reason or another, right? Um, but if truly this is your first time playing in that space, practice with a friend, practice with a family member over video chat, and just get a good idea of your background, your surroundings, the way light's coming in, the way that light is coming in uh, at the particular time of day in the room that you're in. Um, so in other words, um, I had a video interview for the position I'm in right now. And what I didn't anticipate is the interview was in the morning. And for whatever reason, every practice that I'd done had been in the afternoon. The sun came through a completely different way in the morning, and it put this like weird light around my head, and it, it made it made me very difficult to see. Um, I'm sharing in that self-deprecating way my story. Thankfully, I still got the job right, so it wasn't the end of the world. I just kept rolling. But um, at any rate, right now, and to answer your question, Erin, I am looking at my camera. Whereas, and Aaron and I were just practicing this together yesterday because it does feel a little bit clumsy. Research tells you that it is appropriate to look at your camera while you're talking. Um, look into your camera while you're talking rather than at the person. So my advice there would be to look at your camera, but also while the interviewer is talking, for example, if Aaron or Matt were an interviewer, I would be looking at them like this while they're talking, which I don't think is inappropriate either. And it may feel a little bit more natural to you. You should never feel so forced in what you're doing that it adds yet another element of clumsiness to this, right? Because it's not <laughs> super um, suave to begin with, let's call it what it is. Now, um, Matt, how about when uh, maybe a uh, given our environment that we're in right now, perhaps a child or a spouse or a dog makes an unscheduled uh, appearance or noise. 
uh, in the background, perhaps. Um, what would be your advice for kind of handling that situation in a, in a phone or video interview format? So the first thing that you need to do is tell the people in your household that you have an important meeting that you may be part of. It's an interview and that you need to be uninterrupted. If you can't, and say you're in a very small space and unfortunately with COVID, we are stuck at home, right? And so the, you can't go to a, an outside source. You can't go to a library because buildings are closed. So if it does happen and you do get interrupted by a child, it has happened to me in many meetings, unfortunately. Um, let the person know ahead of time that, to be honest, hey, I'm in a small space and I told my spouse or my children that I'm in an interview, but if you do see someone walking around the background, I do apologize. And most people get it, to be honest, right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I saw the best tag along on a signature of an email stating that I apologize in advance. I have small children and I'm working from home. So if you hear in the background, I do apologize. So people do understand managers, directors, the people that you're interviewing with, like right now, I'm being interrupted right now. <laughs> Perfect time we're talking about this. And he has a school project, so he's going to be leaving in a second. But it does happen right now. Now, ideally, you want to make sure that does not happen and that you do talk to the people in your household. Or if you have a pet, put them in a bedroom. Um, or have someone else take it for a walk while you're doing it. That's like a phone interview as well. Same thing as a phone interview. You don't want to be distracted because when you are distracted, unfortunately, um, it does cause conflict. <laughs> I apologize for that. It's perfect timing. Um, <laughs> but it does happen. Matt, you know, I will add to that that you actually are modeling very appropriate behavior right now because you're correct. In a perfect world, you're going to do all of those things that you mentioned. However, what you just demonstrated is the most um, important thing. If a distraction happens, don't let it derail you, right? Like panic and slam your laptop shut. Yeah. Don't up on the person, right? Um, I think that generally employers are pretty forgiving in this space and they realize that this is not something that anybody, you know, ever anticipated or asked for. But the most important thing is that you've got to be able to show that you're a flexible person that can deal with stress and deal with interruptions, right? So the fact that Matt just kept rolling, even though his son um, came in the room, is a perfect example of what to do in that situation. So I'm going to even add more to this. Uh, I had an interview at a customer, um, and we're helping out on a project with this customer as an engineering director, and he had three kids under five at home, the engineering director. And he would put himself on mute while uh, the other person was talking, but when he was asking the questions, you heard the children crying in the background, and it was very distracting. But it also showed to the candidate who can get through this, right? And they had to adapt to the scenario, which they did. And the person did get the opportunity based on that. And it just didn't let them bother them because this is the new norm. Family members are our new colleagues, right? Dogs are our new workmates. And this is going to happen now. We have to adjust to it as best as possible. But you want to make it, you want to prepare as much as possible and have as many distractions out of the way. Mm -hmm. Have your cell phone off. Don't let that interrupt you. Uh, just as make it focus on the person that you're talking to or the people that you're talking to. And as Kelly mentioned before, practice with your friends. You can set up a Zoom meeting with your friends and just talk about life. But then you're looking at, I'm looking at the camera right now instead of my friend or looking at myself in the corner right here. You want to make sure that you understand um, how the video technology works. And as Kelly mentioned, you don't want your first interview to be Zoom without any practice, because that would be a disaster. And there are so many more uh, questions that we could add on to this, but I definitely um, want to thank you guys now for, um, you know, introducing this topic and providing your insights. Uh, Kelly, if there were other questions, people were looking for more information, where would you recommend our alumni go? Yes. So. 
First and foremost, understand that Career Services is here to support our alumni as well. Um, if you'd like more information, you can go to oakland.edu backslash career services. And actually, from there, there's a link to Handshake, which you actually also have access to as an alumni. And I would highly encourage you to create a Handshake account for yourself so that you can explore job opportunities and resources. In fact, Erin, we do have resources to support both our students and alumni um, as they navigate virtual uh, search and interviewing. So for example, we have some resources to help our students explore how to best prepare and execute phone and video interviews. And so as an alum, you've got lifetime access to Oakland University Career Services and Handshake. Um, and we're certainly more than happy to help you in that way. And Erin, I know that in addition to that, the Alumni Association has a Facebook page with um, further resources and opportunities for engagement for our alumni friends too. That's right. Thank you for that plug. Um, so we're actually going to uh, formally conclude today's video on uh, video and phone interviewing tips. But we are hoping to uh, be back next week. Um, and we're going to talk about leveraging LinkedIn and uh, how we can use that for informational interviews. So uh, we'll look forward, Kelly and Matt, to talking to you guys again. Thank you so much for all of your input and your feedback for today. We really appreciate it. And hopefully everybody out there watching this, you've enjoyed it. And you'll come back for our next video in a week. So we'll see you soon.